I've been putting together this show about Pentecost. There is, now this is, this is great, because all of you that are here right now, you're going to get this. A hidden message in the book of Acts about speaking in tongues. So I've shared on the channel before I've talked about the meaning of names, right? That God hides truth even in someone's name. Like Jacob, there's a truth there. There's a truth in your name. You got to look up what your name means. Find out why you were called what you were called. Because God is behind everything. God is in the instrument that is, uh, you know, playing you. You may not even know it. Names have meaning. Joseph means God has added. Jehovah has added. That's what it literally means. Mary literally means their rebellion. Like man's rebellion from truth. God has added to their rebellion. Joseph and Mary. Jesus. Yahshua. Salvation. God has added to man's rebellion. Salvation. Jesus was from Nazareth. A Nazarite is one that is separated from the world. God has added to man's rebellion, salvation, and separated them from the world. Like the, took the tares that were in them, burned them away. Gathered all, all the wheat, all the barley to the house, to the storehouse. It's a picture of spiritual maturity. It's a picture of finally entering into that rest. Feast of weeks, seven. So names have meaning. Right? Names. I've, I've broken down the 12 tribes of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan. You put them all together. Reuben means behold the son. Simeon means hearing, to hear. Remember Simon was the one that carried Jesus' cross on the road to Golgotha? Remember? It was Simon that carried the cross. Those that can hear the truth carry the cross. Behold the son hears. Levi means joined to. Behold, the son hears and joins to give praise. That's what Judah is, to praise. Dan is a judge because I'm married to the Dan Dan. She's my judge. God is my judge through her. She keeps me on track. I love the Dan Dan so much. So you put them all together. Behold, the son hears and joins to give praise to a judge wrestling, to invade, to make straight, to reward and exalt whom Jehovah has added. Joseph, God has added to the son of the right hand, Benjamin. God's gonna reward us, exalt us, because God added us to the son of the right hand, added us to Christ. We become part of the body of Christ. So there are these hidden messages. Now in the book of Acts, there is a hidden message that no one's talked about. I think I'm the only one that discovered it, that I'm aware of. Pentecost is broken down in the book of Acts, okay? Now, I just wanna, I just wanna read this to you. Because there is a, um, before I even break down the, uh, the, the hidden message, which is going to blow your mind, like 100% blow your mind. Now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and once again, that word Pentecost is 50 days, right? After those seven weeks, if you will, was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. That means all of them, they were on the same page. They knew love, they knew hope, they knew truth. They were all together, united. And suddenly, there came, now they were in an upper room, very symbolic of us going to a higher place of understanding. But there was a literal upper room that took place, I'm sure. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. Now, where is heaven? The kingdom of heaven is within. As a rushing, mighty wind. So as a doctrine. Something that was unexpected. They went up to learn something. They went to celebrate this feast. They went to find God. And they went up in one accord with the same hope. And there came a sound from heaven. A rushing, mighty doctrine. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. We are the house of God. We are the temple of God. Now, and there appeared onto them cloven, that means separated, separate, tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. A noble truth comes to us and it sits on your heart. And because of it, you now have a separate tongue from everybody else. Your tongue is cloven, separated. 
Fire is symbolic of truth. Jesus is a consuming fire. I am the way, the truth, and the life. A consuming fire. Tongues like as if fire. And they were filled with what? The Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, cloven tongues, a separated tongue. They got together, one accord. They went up, a sound from heaven within them. The truth just was revealed to them. Holy Spirit filled the house and they began to speak another tongue. Their native tongue. The native tongue of everyone. Because at the same time that this was going down, there were people from all over the world. All the world that were gathered in this place. And they heard this ruckus going on upstairs. They all heard all these people shouting and carrying on. When you hear the story, you think of them just talking in gibberish. Many times you go to churches and people speak in tongues and you, it looks like they're, some people say, oh, they're, they're, they're possessed with something. Other people say, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Who knows? But you can't understand it because it seems like babble. Then others will tell you stories of, you know, well, they spoke and they were in Iran or they were in, you know, um, Zimbabwe or wherever and they were speaking in tongues and everybody understood. People tell stories. I'm not saying that that's not something that turns out to be true but i'm saying it's just the truth it's a native tongue that is spoken and and in the story what they do is they spell out all the different countries and all the different areas and all those names have meaning what meaning they have is going to blow your mind this is a breakdown of that story the breakdown of the story which i was just reading to you of all the people that were there. Actually, let me see. Let me see if I can pull up a bigger picture of it so we could read it to you one more time. Now, they were sitting in Jerusalem, staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Every nation, not some, all of them. And this is where it gets good. This is where it gets good. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together bewildered. It's like, what's going on? Because if each of them heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these all who are speaking Galileans? Which, by the way, the word Galilee, Galileo, Galileans, it means um, unbroken circuit, circular, like the Ouroboros. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? So these Galileans, how is it that they know our native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. So you can see, you can see how this is pretty interesting because you have all these different places, all these different places, and somehow they all heard their native tongue. Now, what if that native tongue is love? What if that native tongue is more? So, every one of those places, every one of those, Parthia. Parthia means a pledge. A pledge. Like God's pledged his loyalty to us, or I pledged my loyalty to someone. A pledge. Medes means the middle land. A middle land is a place that's in between heaven and and hell, dwelling in the middle. Elam means eternity. Very interesting. Residents that they're talking about are those who reside. Mesopotamia means between two rivers. Also, choices. You have two choices. Judah, he shall be praised. Cappadocia, the province of good horses. The appearance of them is as horses. Saints. Pontus, the sea. Asia derives from the Greek word meaning resurrection. Phagiria. I'm pronouncing it wrong. Dry, barren. Pamphlia, of every tribe. Egypt, double straits, jeopardy, hard times, trouble. Libya, afflicted, weeping. Around, according to Cyrene, the supremacy of the bridal. Visitors means to be president among one's people. Rome means strength. 
Joe, Jews, those who praise God, proselytes are those that are new to the faith. That's basically everything spelled out. Okay, now when you hear it together, this is where it gets good. This is the native tongue, okay, that they were hearing together because they were in one accord together. A pledge was made to those of the land between heaven and hell in eternity. To those who resided between two choices, God shall be praised. For the saints and those dwelling in the sea of ignorance, there will be resurrection for the barren of every tribe, those in trouble, those afflicted, and those weeping. Because of the supremacy of God's bridal will be present among the people, great strength, not only for those who praise God, but also for the newcomers of the faith. If that doesn't get your goosebumps going, I don't know what will. It's a day of liberty, a day of freedom, a day of truth. Pentecost, the holiday that's coming up right now, the harvests that are upon us. First fruits, barley, then you got the wheat, got the threshing, then you got the grapes. Come in with the wheat, people, right? You don't want to be part of the grapes, but even the grapes are going to be all right in the end. But in this story, when you take every one of those places in order, mind you, in order, let me read it one more time. So this is the Acts 2 breakdown. Share this around with people, okay? Because while everybody's talking about how, oh, they were talking in different languages, and maybe they were, but this is what the places mean. A pledge was made to those who dwell between the heaven and hell and in eternity. A pledge was made to us all in eternity. To those who reside between two choices, God's going to be praised. You got heaven, you got hell. But in this place, God is going to be praised. For the saints and those dwelling in the sea of ignorance. Not just for the good people, not just for the people that know God, not for the people that have been on YouTube forever talking about the Lord. For even the people dwelling in the sea of ignorance, there will be resurrection for every baron of every tribe. Those in trouble, those afflicted and weeping. And why is that the case? You know what a bridle is? When they're in that horse race, right? This is why I'm so glad Lance reached out to me because it really is a nice tie-in. If you want to win the race, first of all, you're not going to do it having a meltdown. That's the first thing. But that bridle is important. God's got us. He's going to direct us over the finish line. Do you get that? Because of the supremacy of God's bridle, the supremacy of it, nothing can thwart God's will. And it's God's will that all be saved. For the saints and those dwelling in the sea of ignorance. There's going to be resurrection for every barren of every tribe. For those in trouble, those afflicted and weeping. Because of the supremacy of God's bridal. And this supremacy of God's bridal, God's control will be present among the people. There will be great strength. Not only for those who praise God. But also for the newcomers to the faith. That's... I can't... I can't top that, people. So this is where I end the show. Two minutes before I got to go. I love each and every one of you. I really do. I hope that this encouraged you. And I hope you have a wonderful Pentecost. I'll probably talk about this more in the coming days. But for now, I got to tell you, I think that this is a message that I think more people should uh, should listen to. It's hope. Hope right there in the book of Acts. Hidden away. Tucked beneath it. A message from God to us. Can't fail. You may be between a couple of choices right now. God's going to still be praised. You may feel barren. You may be lost right now. There's still going to be a resurrection for you. You may be hurt. You may be weeping. You may be crying right now as I'm speaking to you. But God's going to give you a reward. 
can't fail. Why? Not because of you, but because of the supremacy of that bridle. I'm running the race. I hope you are too. I love each and every one of you. Hit the like button, please. Please get yourself a copy of The Calling. Amazon, if you want, get yourself a Uranus as a planet. That means heaven, by the way. It's also a nice, funny thing to say, people, when you're drinking. And uh, all the merch is in the description of the video. All these things help me like you wouldn't believe. The patrons, oh, I love you so much. People on PayPal, oh, I love you so I love you all so much. If you sh share the video around, tell people, hey, you got to check the end of the message out the most because I think this is the one that people need to hear. I love all of you, and I will talk to you soon. September 10th, Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling.